direct your thoughts to the breath, direct your attention to the breath. Notice where you feel it, notice if it's comfortable. If it's not comfortable, you can change. In other words, you direct not only your thoughts, but you start directing the breath. As the Buddha said, when, when your self is rightly directed, it's one of the highest blessings. You have to think about the fact that here we have a teaching that's very reliable as to what's worthwhile to do, what's not worthwhile to do. What will lead to your long-term welfare and happiness, what will lead to your long-term harm and pain. It gives reliable instructions. It's been guaranteed now for 2,600 years. And we're fortunate that that teaching is still alive and available to us, and we have the opportunity to practice it. So find some joy there. I go to places where the Dharma is still very weak. And you look at people's lives, and they don't have much of a direction. They try to find some pleasure, they try to fight, avoid pain, but they don't have any really reliable instructions. And some people in their search for pleasure can do an awful lot of harm as a result. And other people have the opportunity, but they just don't take it. You find this even in places where the Dharma is available, a lot of people don't take the opportunity. So even though the Buddha points in the right direction, each person has to choose that direction for him or herself. But then be happy that there is a clear direction. The instructions are reliable, the instructions are clear. And they're all about doing good things, being generous, being virtuous, developing thoughts of goodwill, training the mind in mindfulness, concentration, discernment. As the Buddha said, the Dharma is good not only in the beginning and the end, but also in the middle, in the, court, in the way you practice. It makes sense. It's a good practice and it's a good, has a good goal. We're fortunate that we have this Dharma, so take some joy in the Dharma. Take, take some joy in the fact that you can give some direction to your life. And it starts with simple things like this. As the Buddha said, don't underestimate acts of merit. Just as a water jar gets filled drop by drop by drop, in the same way that little acts of merit, when you overcome unskillful mind states, say you find the mind in a bad mood, you don't let it just sit in that bad mood. You find some way to extricate yourself and take joy in that. It's a good thing that you can do that. Your mind starts wandering off to thoughts it shouldn't be thinking and you pull it out, take joy in that. Learn to see that as, a, as an important accomplishment. Don't underestimate your acts of merit, just as you don't underestimate unskillful of acts. The word underestimate here is basically a translation of being heedless. We tend to think of heedfulness as dealing with dangers, but it also deals with things that can prevent us from falling into danger. Don't be heedless about the good things you can do. We're fortunate that we have this clear sense of direction, these clear directions that get us directed well. Don't underestimate them, and don't take them for granted. They're here now, take advantage of them now, and that will be for your long-term welfare and happiness.